Marco getting first blood here. So this is interesting because, again, Game Watch with Bucket can really manipulate Marco's projectiles against him, but even then, Marco's not going to be you know, not tossing bombs. So... Good up air, he's able to recover. Oh, I think Monty wanted to direct those sausages the other direction. Right. I think the thing about for Marco too is even if he doesn't have to use projectiles, he's definitely accustomed and has trained himself to not use them in certain situations against opponents. So if he's forced to have to change his dynamic towards Game & Watch, it's definitely an adaptation that won't be hard for him. And the one thing that both Toon Link and regular, I'm sorry, Toon Link and Young Link have over Link is just having a really good disjointed Zare. And that's another opportunity that doesn't get reflected and has a little bit of a disjoint against characters like Game & Watch. And that's an yeah. excellent setup to force Woo! Monty to come back to the stage and then ultimately read the landing on that air dodge. That entire sequence from Mar Marco recovering back to ledge to overwhelming Monty in the end was so key. That's, and that's the thing about like Toon Link and even Marco as a whole. Like he's an, has an excellent job just overwhelming his opponents by going with projectiles. But it's not that he just spams them. He has such a way with throwing them out on the field that it forces his opponents to actually make the valuable choice. Do I want to come back on the stage? And is this worth? And at the end of the day, it's sometimes Marco making it not worth for his opponents. Sometimes even Marco misses, and there's very few characters in the game who whiff punish better than Demon Watch, which is why Monte was able to close out Marco's first stock with a big F smash a moment ago. I like this right now. Both players are just trying to find their way in ways. Oh, that was close. Almost the down there, and he had the boomerang set up too as well, just to cover something against Game and Watch. Marco with such a lead, 14 and 93. Honestly, like I said, Marco can definitely afford to play back. But we'll see what kind of setups he's got here with boomerang arrows. Got the bomb pull. What a great spacing, too. Definitely avoiding the bucket. Neutral to call out an aerial. Man, Marcos just poised to continue to move around, but nothing on the returning boomerang. That was scary because if Monte had gone for a rollback or if he was anywhere near Marco on that up smash from the boomerang, that would have been curtains for the stock. Like I said, it's. It's almost like Marco makes calculated spamming. That's that's what's crazy. <laughs> like it's it's spam. It, people will argue like, oh, he's just spamming projectiles. Well, it's calculated. It's all according to Marco's Oof. master plan. Just funny that he couldn't he couldn't punish the sausages being top tossed there. Oh, big fair from Monty. Again. Oh, great, great get up attack, dude. Excellent way to stop Monte from going for another smash at the ledge. What a pressure with the bombs. Jab. And the jab. Yeah, and that'll be the stock too because of how well he's at the ledge and the percent that Monte was able to just time that. Man, that's a rapid jab that he used to tell people it's pretty bad, but now in ultimate, it just come as a whole to be really good. Given the situation Marco with, at the ledge. Marco with the fear causing Monte to drop shield and take that stock. Now we are last stop situation. Oh. Monte driving right now. Yeah, he was, he's driving, dude, and he's driving that bucket straight into Marco, knowing that if Marco wants to go for a boomerang aerial approach there, he will be reflected back, and this will give Monte a little bit of aggression. See how that reflection comes Oh, big trade. Yeah, part of it is that Marco really wants to use boomerang to set up the, like, and then of his, his uh, trap and punish game. Right, right, right. So by right. throwing out a bucket first, it really makes Marco have to deal with not being able to do what he wants. Oh, yeah, Marco nice grab. It. That was good for Marco. Just hold, held shield because at the worst situation, you're just going to get grabbed and thrown, and then you have to reset at the ledge. And that's not too bad, give all things considered. Big double hit of down air from Game Watch. Marco still surviving. Yeah, I like that Marco just holds his horses there. Like, he doesn't have to press the gas pedal all the way through. When you get to the stage, just try to find ways to come back. And you can tell that Monty is immediately trying to guard the stage and guard center stage as he reads that landing with get up attack. Yeah, Sorry, Monty right now is just, Monty is just showing excellent ledge trap right now, just sending Marco from blasting to blasting back and forth. Marco is trying to find a way to start moving in. Yeah, if it's not one side of the blast zone, it's the other side here. And he's pushing him ever closer off the stage. But also good on Marco to evaluate. Like, when you're getting juggled from Game of Watch, your best bet is to try to reserve from the ledge. But what a play out of the shield there using the boomerang. It's like you said, Fro. He's always going for the end, then opportunities from boomerang. Like so. Oh, again! Right, Marco's Mar closed the gap here. Oh, no! Oh. Not no. like this! <laughs> No, like this, Mark. It's just so funny. Monty continues to claim games 
with like the most raw down airs late in the late in the stock. That's it's almost like mental it's jo- exhaustion of having to deal with Game Watch's options, just honestly, making that happen. Honestly, I'm a hundred percent agree with you. Like that was pretty much like <laughs> Marco was doing good, man. Like he literally it's like he studied for the test, he was ready the day of, and then the morning of the test, he forgot everything because he only studied last minute. And that's when Valentine got him, dude. But I respect you too. And when he goes back to like check all his like flashcards and, and studying info, it was literally the answer on the first one. Yeah, uh, but that's the oh. nice thing about Ultimate too is like running in Shield is not as good as it was compared to Smash. No. Fire. Yeah, and that's now this is too. interesting. We're actually seeing a character swap from Monte, who actually took Game One, going Meta Knight. This is kind of interesting too because Marco has had some experience with Meta Knight before, and he's usually come out on top. But it's been quite some time, so we'll see how Monte's Meta Knight plays. You know, having experience against a Meta Knight is one thing, but every Meta, everybody's Meta Knight is different, and matchups can go different depending on the opponent than it is depending on the character at times. So we'll see how Marco handles it. If I were to be as presumptive, you could maybe make the argument that Monte is warming up as Meta Knight as maybe a counterpick against Great Clash's Veo. Yeah. This is definitely also a character in the meta that just hasn't really come together as a whole. But that's the thing about Meta Knight. Oh, it's oh, excellent, yeah. Excellent play on stage. What a beautiful setup there by Marco. That's the thing about all three Links in particular. If their opponent is content to being in the air like Meta Knight is, Two Link and Young Link have some of the best speeds to just challenge them for being in the air and using all those multiple jumps. But also the way that they can angle Boomerang, Boomerang on the return, that's the up smash. What a play from Marco, man. He covered all his bases. <laughs> That is such a, like, devious ploy there. Like, even if you manage to be recognized in the shield through all hits of upbeat, here comes Boomerang. Yeah. Marco so again just cleaving Monty and sending him off stage. So, like, like for a while, we're going to talk a little bit about our age here because it's relevant at this point. Have you ever <laughs> played the board game called Rat Trap? Yes. Marco grew up playing this game. I, I'm ah. serious. I feel like he grew up playing Rat Trap at this point, and he knows how to trap his opponents with every projectile. I, like I said, it's part of the master plan. I just remember that putting the bell back together was always the most hard part, so it would always it, it fall was, over anyway. It was the worst. Oh, oh man. See, this is like, I think this might be a, might be a not a smart move by Monty because he's misspaced these Meta Knight F smashes so much, and it's so important in Meta Knight's game plan to hit those. Right, right. And with the, oh, oh. There, yeah, and then you can see that Monty was immediately just trying to avoid that with the jump. But like I said, Marco's got the speed, the projectiles to stop Meta Knight in his tracks. If Meta Knight is content to be in the air, that boomerang will always be there to yeah. catch him. Oh, all right. Well, that was an odd ploy. And so we're all evened up and going to the pivotal game three. Let's see if Monty is going to go back to Game & Watch or if he might have just had some foresight into what he thinks Marco wants. And thinks Meta Knight is ultimately the answer. Who knows? I mean, it'll be interesting if he just hits the run back button, like, right now. <laughs> ah, okay. Not gonna Honestly, happen. Honestly, <laughs> like, like, Meta Knight is a character, I just tell people, it's really hard to put him in the meta because he's got some strong tools and a good representative in Bonk. If you guys are looking for, like, some really strong meta yeah. gameplay, Bonk is one of the... Definitely one of the best ones. I argue to a lot of people that he's one of the characters that, that just like Sheik and Ultimate, Meta Knight and Sheik are just one one of the characters I immediately think they are one buff away from being like one of the best characters of the game. Yep. And Monty is going to go back to being one of the best characters currently in the game. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The game and watch is... He is, he is a pain online, but he is a terror offline. So no matter where yep. you face him... It's really rough here, but Marco definitely has one one apiece. He's got a game three. We'll see if he can make it on the re on the rematch against Grey Clash, or will it be Monte moving forward? Here? It's going to be a four throw. Great play from Monte and the bomb on Marco. Not what he wants them to take down. This ledge trap has just been going on forever since the prehistoric oh. agent Marco didn't pass the tech test. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and I see a little bit of a lag spike there. And unfortunate stuff from Marco, given the situation of Wi-Fi. And then. We're inching ever closer to offline, folks, so don't. I know. So you know it's coming around the corner. You just got to deal with it a little bit longer. Bomb recatch from Marco. He's trying to find his way in. All right, saving that jump. I do like that play to go for a low recovery, but dang. See, that's... Look, I don't, I don't want to... 
I don't want to talk <laughs> smack. I don't. I don't want to say like this. But like, man, getting hit by those getting hit by Chef is like the most easy bake edge guarding, man. It's like you bought the easy bake machine at the Toys R Us. If you still remember what that is, and then you get the free edge guard off that, because oh. you can set up to opportunities just like Monte, you can get grabs, and it forces Marco to really evaluate. Like when I do come back on the stage, is me going for shield roll even good enough, or is coming from the air play? And I think that's something Marco has to evaluate as he sees Monte with the third stock still. Forces off ledge, but so much knockback actually propelled Monte back up on the platform and right into Marco's waiting arms with that up air to take the stock. Yeah, 103 though, Monte definitely has the opportunity to take it over Marco with a huge lead that he's got. All right. Oh, he actually whiffed an F smash. Mm -hmm. Bomb with no play, definitely giving his opponent the no mix up, mix up. Obviously, sometimes holding all the cards to your chest until the last second to make a big play is the best opportunity here. Oh no, Monte started to count on Marco over relying on Boomerang. Got him a bad disadvantage. Does not go for grab this time. He was having so much success with pressuring Sausage to grab. He yeah. just didn't go for it. That was interesting. And, and it's good for him to do it at the ledge too, because like I said, Marco has to really evaluate, like, do I want to go for a roll getup, which gives Game & Watch the chef will actually hit me on the roll getup in space properly, but what a great way to call out that air dodge on the stage. Big backer from Monte, who's got oh. Marco in disadvantage. Oh man, there goes Marco's stock. Man, getting hit by the sad turtle is not fun. <laughs> oh, 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 Monte almost did not survive that. Oh, great play from Marco, too, because look how he sets up that recovery against Monte. Covering with two bombs. If that boomerang would have been the forward air, this would have put Marco at even game. But like I said, Marco is a master of setting up every projectile for a reason. He just narrowly missed the mark on that forward air. Must be catching Marco in the air. Back air. Now here comes the near train. Up air. Bomb. Oh, nice avoidance by Marco. Oh, he gets hit by at ledge. Yeah, and when you're getting juggled by Game & Watch, your best option, given Game & Watch's tools to juggle you, is just to resort to the ledge, because the more you try to go hard for center stage, Game & Watch can read your landing or just juggle you, and you take unnecessary wow. damage at that point. Marco with the up recover recovery here, bomb to make the play. No, Barely getting the clearance just to get to the other side of the stage, but he still gets the up air. That was a sequence for Marco, man, because he dodged all, just about everything he could from Monte there. I'm not gonna be able to pierce uh, Game Watch's shield. Monte's playing this so well defensively right now. Marco, the desperation hasn't quite set in. I wonder if Monte's starting to just rel relent on the uh, bucket usage in order to catch Marco in a really opportune time. Oh, wow. Good boomerang set by Marco. Out of shield play, nothing to be found here. Marco taking his time, and they think this is how he's figuring out how to play this matchup here. He's got to play it more like a zoner and less on the aggressive side. Great call out on the up air. Here is the setup for Marco. This is going to be pretty crucial because if he gets this down right, 71 could be a curtains for Game Watch. Uh oh. Oh no, the air dodge. Okay, good. He saved the jump. He saved the jump. Just jump. Yeah, he saved the jump. That air dodge was very scary. I saw Marco pull it off. I was like, hold on, man. Game now. Yeah, even game. What a call out. <laughs> <laughs> call out because that was that was adaptation that he had against monte the one thing that marco had been doing against monte in particularly is going for bomb throw and then forward air but this time marco just rewrote the script he says what if i don't throw the bomb at this opportunity and just go for the aerial instead and monte was seeing ghosts there that bomb that was tossed at ledge was 